Hey, how's it going? Happy Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Time for another RCS Live. How's it going? How's your week going so far? Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering. As always, hanging out with you every Thursday for another RCS Live. Today, we are talking about Zeta Cloud disaster recovery. Essentially, just reviewing your 2023 disaster recovery plans. Now, I swear that I had this planned back in December, just so you know. So the whole thing that's going on with one of the radio industries, uh, I'm not going to say any names because obviously it's unfortunate for anybody who gets a cyber attack and all of that. But just so you know, this was, it, unfortunately, this is the world we live in right now. And I have a lot of conversations with um, you know multiple clients talking about what is your disaster recovery plan, right? It's really unfortunate, but it's a conversation we have to have. And so the question becomes is what happens in for your uh, air chain? What happens for your audio? What happens for your commercials? What happens for your voice tracking and stuff like that? And so you've heard me say this a lot talking about Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery in the RCS Cloud, just identifying how we can back up you know, in a case of a disaster, be it a physical disaster like a fire, flood, or an earthquake, or some type of uh, cryptoware cyber attack and stuff like that. So today we're kind of review some of those things. A little bit of housekeeping to get away. The uh, housekeeping to get out of the way first. Um, hey, Mark, how's it going, man? Hopefully, I'll see more from you later. Um, RJ, how's it going, RJ? I got the chat open here as well. Thank you all for checking in. Of course, we're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter Live. If we're missing something, let me know. I can add that to our little social media mediums as well. Um, and let's see here. Um, housekeeping to get out of the way, of course, all of our past videos are on our archive, rcsworks.com slash rcs-live. You can check those out there. Uh, some great videos there on our blog section. As you know, we do a write-up recap on every one of these videos so you can kind of read it first and then see if it pertains to you and, and go from there. You might have seen, by the way, that we're back on the road. I got to tell you, I'm really excited for uh, 2023. I don't know what it is. Maybe I, had, I got a nice nap in finally. <laughs> I, have a, I have a toddler. Um, but maybe I don't know what it is, but I'm really excited this year. So we got CRS coming down the pipeline, uh, Radio Days Europe, NAB, All Access Radio Summit, um, NRB, CMB, the list goes on and on. And what we're going to do this year, it's been a while. We haven't seen you. Uh, we're going to do some little one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if you're just curious and you want to uh, pick my brain or one of our brains about, hey, I'm doing this, this, and this, you know, as you know, I always say this every single week, how do you know how to do something if no one showed you in the first place, right? So if you're going to be out and about at one of these uh, conferences, let us know. Uh, we'll schedule some time and talk about, you know, whatever you want to talk about, some shop, if you will. Maybe you want to talk about Zeta Cloud, right? Maybe you want to talk about the future of Zeta Cloud, which is Zeta Cloud Automation, which we'll get there in just a little bit. Don't you worry right now. We're really focused on talking about disaster recovery. That's the goal. So, uh, oh, before I forget too, um, we are looking for beta users, as always, for Zeta 523.1. That's just about to be released. That's the same 522.1 uh, version that was from last year. We just got around the holidays and thought nobody's going to upgrade around you know, Thanksgiving. So we just pushed it to this year. That's all that is. Um, so if you're curious to become a beta user for that, you can definitely do that. We got a Quira uh, 323 one. We got some G Selector stuff in the mix as well. Any questions, you know, I'm always here to help out. Just, just reach out on social media. Let me know what I can do to help. And I'm here for you. So um, in part of that 2023 backup recovery plan don't forget by the way uh check out your backup paths your data exchanges uh as well so just to review um in your backup paths i just know this from working years in support there's always that one person who has like a usb stick or something where they have or like a windows batch file that moves something and one person moves a drive, plugs it back in, all of a sudden the E drive turns into the F drive and it messes everything up. So friendly reminder, 2023 brand new year, double check up those backup paths, make sure they're working as well. If you have G Selector, uh, we do have data exchanges that are essentially your cloud backups. That's free, it's part of your contract. And in regards to disaster recovery, don't forget that we have a special data exchange recovery console so what we do is we take your most recent backup, whatever that is, and we save a copy of it. So if you do what I used to do, and every Tuesday and Friday, I would send myself data exchanges, 
um, we would keep the most recent one always on file. And so if anything ever happens, you can just restore it and it's no harm, no foul. Easy peasy. That's on G Selector. But let's focus on the Zeta automation world and talk about Zeta Cloud. Now, I'm going to show you where we are right now with Zeta Cloud, some of the latest features and all of that good stuff. And you're going to ask yourself, Nate, why don't I just run my station on Zeta Cloud? And the reality is, is that when you think about an entire radio operation, there's a little subtle nuances that we take for granted, like GPIOs, network programming, and satellite feeds, and macros, and set of splits, and all of that stuff. And so what we're starting to do is, you know, in the background is sort of incorporate some of those things, right? And make sure we give you a full automation package and not just kind of a, well, you can do this, but you can't do the everything else that's in there, right? And so we're working on that right now. we got some exciting stuff coming on the pipeline for you. As I know more and I can show more, trust me, I will. Um, but what we have right now is essentially Zeta Cloud in disaster recovery mode. So what does that mean? So first off, what does disaster recovery portion mean? So we take your Zeta, and by the way, this is my tied Zeta here, right? This is my Zeta back in White Plains, New York. It's linked over here to my Zeta Cloud instance. You'll see that I'm using Chrome. It's a us.zetacloud.com uh, that has a two-factor authentication. So you don't need to have a VPN for security purposes. And what we do here on the Zeta side is go to config. We go to our uh, site replication manager. You will need site replication for this. And you can see there is my Zeta Cloud instance. I know it's kind of small there right now in that thing. I want to make things a little bigger. Um, but that's just where you set that up. That's all it is. Once you log in your credentials, boom, we're good to go. Life is great, right? And so again, um, when we talk about disaster recovery, when you have site replication, now a lot of our users right now will have kind of a linear site rep, you know, a backup Zeta system at their transmitter site. And what this is the same exact behavior, but instead of going left to right, we're going up to the cloud. Now, what do I mean by the cloud? This is not some type of VM and an AWS instance, because that can still be corrupted by, let's say, uh, cryptoware attacks, something like that. So what we have here is Zeta Cloud is truly a software written on an AWS container that is specific to your instance with your audio, with your SQL backups on top of that. So we take your daily backups, all of your audio, all your schedule changes, and we push that to Zeta Cloud. And once it's in Zeta Cloud, think of it as its own market, its own instance. We're just getting the log and the audio from your Zeta system, but this is running independently, right? We follow along what's going on, but this is its own independent market. And then what happens is there is a disaster. Something unfortunate happens. Again, cryptoware, um, fire, flood, earthquake, hard drive crashes, or routine updates. Just making sure you're doing uh, Zeta version updates or just maintaining things, stuff like that. This can also ease uh, you know, your mind. Not everything has to be disaster here, right? Some things can just be very simplistically like, hey, I got to run a Zeta update. I'll just enable Zeta Cloud and call it a day, right? Something like that. Uh, and by the way, I got my chat open here too. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I can see it on the right-hand side. So what we do here is essentially, once we connect the two, the Zeta Cloud disaster recovery and your Zeta system, we do nothing. You just sit and let it run, Right? Everything gets updated, all the schedules get updated, all the audio gets updated, all of your SQL backups get updated. And then in case of disaster, a disaster, <laughs> in case of disaster, um, we essentially go back and reload the environment. Now think about this for a second. If you get, let's say, a cryptoware attack and you have uh, three machines, a server, a control room, production room, keep it simple. They go down, you unplug them. Think about what this does for your engineering and IT department to give them a chance to assess the situation. Right. If you get a cryptoware, even a warning, you want unplug everything immediately. Right. You can go to your Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge. So of course it's just a URL. That means Mac or PC, your tablet, whatever it is. You go in here into Zeta Cloud and you essentially enable your sequencer. Right. I have some past videos on this, just so you know, for our current Zeta Cloud clients. They wanted a quick little easy reminder of how to enable a sequencer. You can check that out on our archive. But all it is is essentially go over here and we just take this, it's an online, right? The sequencer's online, that's all it is. And then once that's online, right? We then queue it up where we want it to be in the log, 
play next, boom, we're on the air. You can literally be on the air in 30 seconds uh, after a disaster attack. That's how quick this is, right? And so the idea is that all of your audio is ready, your schedules are ready, your sequencer is just waiting in idle mode. That's all it is. And we're just queuing it up, pressing play, and we're good to go. Uh, some of our users prefer to pay for a 24-7 model where it's always on, kind of doing its thing. We can do that too. We can work with you. We can work with you for anything if you wanted to. But the idea is that if I had that file server control room production room with the same machine names, if I go back and restore that SQL backup, think about that for a second. The Zeta environment sees the computers, knows the roles, the services have been assigned. So when I go and restore that environment, I'm restoring everything like this. We're back online quicker, more efficient because we have those machine names. Everything's there. All things aren't defined. We're taking your existing Zeta environment and just replicating it. And we're doing this securely through an AWS container, right? Again, not a VM. This is software written for and on AWS following best practices and securities with your own container on there for your profile. So it's a little more secure for you. You had another location for redundancy. And of course, the beauty is, is that once it's up and running, you can continue to operate normally. I, I say normally, but I'm going to say like as a typical normal nine to five day, right? You can do that with Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery. So hopefully that makes sense on the disaster portion, how we recover the SQL backups, the audio. Ooh, I should mention too before I forget, when we restore your Zeta and we press play, Obviously, we have a lot of data in the audio. So what we'll do is we have a dynamic audio. So if I, let's say right now it's 11 a.m., right? So if I restore my 11 a.m. environment, I have my schedule for 11, I press play. We're going to restore the audio from 11 a.m. first, followed by then 12, 1, 2, up until the entire library has been downloaded. That's what we're doing there, right? So at this point in time, we have we covered the disaster portion, the recovery portion. Let's talk about things you can do in Zeta Cloud. And this is so cool. Uh, this is a true uh, cloud-based solution, unlike some others who kind of say, hey, it's a cloud solution, but in reality, it's a VM. And there's nothing stopping a cryptoware person from going into that VM and just corrupting that VM in itself, right? This is software written on AWS. So we have here, um, we have modules open. You'll see this is kind of a combination of Zeta to go and Zeta. That's the beauty of this, right? And that's because we have now the technology of HTML5. So we can do a lot more kind of functionality while maintaining that same type of user dynamic, right? Or understanding the UI kind of perspective. And so at the very top, you can see here, I have a layout. We can have multiple layouts here as well. So you can see I have three different layouts. We can save this, organize this based on user or stations or whatever it is. Yes, we still have the same enterprise solution. So in case you're wondering, we take your Zeta server and we link that up to your Zeta Cloud instance. So if you have market A, market B, market C, think of it as if there's a server in each one of those, we have its own, ident uh, own unique Zeta Cloud instance for all those as well, right? And then at this point in time, right, we have the enterprise solution. Click the drop down. There's my stations in the list. And now I have three modules open with some docked modules here as well. So I have my Zeta Cloud, which is my on-air module here. I have my playlist in the bottom left, library bottom right. And what's pretty cool is I can switch between these if I wanted to by just clicking this little drop down. So for example, I can grab my hotkeys, something like that, right? You can see my hotkeys that are designed here um, as well. So there's my hotkeys for RCS Hot AC. Uh, during the asset there, there's all my hotkeys there too. I can jump back over here and maybe I'll go back to the library just for right now. But you can see that's how we played this out. Now, you might be asking yourself from the engineering perspective, okay, this is great, but how do I tie this to my air chain? Um, and we have inside of here under config and stations, I got a lot of videos on this as well. So I'll just quickly summarize this. Um, each one of your stations has a sequencer. That sequencer has an encoder built into it. And what we'll do is for you is we'll also include uh, Revmo, it's our content delivery network. What we'll do is we'll kind of essentially use Revma's powerful stream to kind of tie these two together. So Zeta Cloud has the encoder, Revma has the uh, CDN content delivery network. And you can see here, this is my URL. And yeah, you're like, Nate, I can listen to that. Yeah, you should <laughs> go ahead, listen to my, my demo stream, go ahead. Uh, but yeah, that's where we output that. So then, of course, 
where are we taking that URL? A lot of modern transmitters can go and essentially have that saved inside of their transmitter as a URL, as a backup source. We have some users who essentially put on barracks boxes. That's normal too. Uh, or any kind of combination. I always say this example. It's pretty funny. One of our clients has uh, a agreement with their competitors that they have a little studio in each one of their offices. And so he asked me, he goes, what's stopping me from having a desktop in that room with a little mini board, having you know the desktop playing out Zeta Cloud, running it through the board, board with the mic, mic out to the transmitter site? Yeah, absolutely. This is a URL output. That's what we're doing here. And yes, there is some ways we can go and also include some live streams so that you can essentially incorporate your morning shows, multiple mics. Uh, the Revma conference app can achieve that for you. That's what we're doing there. So uh, at that point in time, right? So we have the output stream. We are operating inside the Zeta Cloud environment. So let's go ahead here just for argument's sake, and let's go ahead and record a voice track here. I already did one earlier, but let's find one. I'll go to jump to 10 p.m. And I'm going to jump. There's a voice track right there. Perfect. I'm going to my library. It's my voice tracker. And there's some settings here. But for time purposes, I'm just going to click on that voice track. That's going to load up over here automatically on the right-hand side. I'm going to record this. Just test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's the next one. Great. I'm going to move this left, move this right. Uh, we have a great little basic uh, voice tracker here for you. Once we save that audio. Now, here's the one feature that we added inside of Zeta Cloud that is tied to your Zeta system. If you delete a song in Zeta Cloud, it will not delete a song in Zeta. There are two separate markets. Zeta merely provides the audio and schedules and backups to Zeta Cloud. However, we had some users that didn't really feel comfortable sharing VPNs during COVID with some of their talent. And so we did is we created the feature that if you record this voice track, in Zeta Cloud, again, two-factor authentication, that's the security portion of it, it will actually land back in your Zeta system. So we're gonna save this voice track right here, and once it takes a couple seconds, because it obviously goes through the internet and all that good stuff, I'm also gonna go ahead here, and uh, we're at 10 o'clock, right? I'm gonna throw in chasing cars at the top of the hour, uh, just because I wanna show you the live log changes as well. So there's that. Actually, you might have seen it just bounced up over there. There's Snow Patrol chasing cars. See that? So that was instant live changes. If I change the chain type, that is a change to the log and will be reflected in your Zeta Cloud instance. If you, I add a song, remove a song from Zeta, that's reflected over here in the schedule. So you can see we just added chasing cars. And just in case you're wondering why did that dry M score for media monitors pop up, I have a G selector fly and link relationship with chasing cars. Zeta sees it goes to G selector, G selector respects it, schedules the imaging piece tied to it. There's an option to turn that off. I leave it on for right now just to show you, but that's why that dry score is in there too. So, oh, there's a voice track. So, sorry, I got distracted. There's a voice track right there. Um, it's the user and Mumford, that's me. It's a voice track. It was recorded on the RCS Hot AC at this time. And if I go to my Zeta library, you can see here, boom, there's that same exact voice track as well. If I double click on it, you'll see I'll open it up here inside the Zeta environment. There's my voice track, nice and pretty, great, good to go. And then of course we respect all traditional Zeta voice tracking properties after it airs, kill dates, all that stuff. We respect the Zeta environment, but you can see I can voice track from Zeta Cloud and it lands back in my Zeta system. Just one of the very unique features we included in the Zeta Cloud to the Zeta environment. Any questions on that? Let me know. I got my chat open. As always, we're live on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter Live. We're talking about Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery, specifically disaster recovery solutions for you in 2023. Um, and as I swear, I joked, uh, I, I did this back in December. I planned this. It just so happens that week, there is that huge cyber attack that's going around. This was not topical. I was not planned. I had this already ready to go. But it shows you how vulnerable we are in the industry and that we need to kind of focus on some of these things. Uh, by the way, looking at the log module here, or the playlist, I should say, there's always options to add an insert event, right? You can see here there's a spot block, exact time marker, or a comment in there. In addition, there's a little voice tracker. So I prefer to have the old school way of the voice track module. But if I wanted to do any transition, just like in Zeta, I can click that insert voice track. A little window will pop up and allows me to voice track that. So I can do something like this, right? We'll insert voice track. 
that pops up here on the right hand side. Now I have this docked. That would be my voice tracker here on the right hand side. And the same, by the way, too, I have the, the mode. So I can do a voice track or a segue. Either one you want to do there. That's there too. So that's the playlist. I'm going to quickly jump over here to the library. Uh, oh, don't forget, there's a full breakdown here. So you can see that I have technically logs through the eighth right now on my Zeta Cloud. Um, I have typical home buttons. I can also copy a playlist. This comes into play right now for your news talk stations. So if you're a news talk and you're getting satellite feeds and all of that, or you're a Zeta split, something on those lines, we essentially use the copy playlist function to get that playlist over and get you some content on the air. Uh, I can navigate here through my hours. So I can go over here and hit like 11 a.m. Or I can just hit the home button. Shows where I'm currently playing in the log itself. That's pretty cool as well. Um, and, uh, I can filter too, if I wanted to, there's some filter options here, um, to see what's skipped or whatever it is. There's just a couple of options in there too. So, um, this whole window is I can customize this. I can move this up if I wanted to, I can move this down if I wanted to, you can see I have two tabs here with the system monitor and the on-air module. This is all customizable. As we said, the layouts are here and you can save those layouts. Uh, on the library side, you'll notice that I have all of my custom asset types here. That's all in there as well. If I double click on an element, we're gonna load the asset card itself. Just like Zeta to go, we're gonna have an option here to download the audio. This is locally cached audio. Think of this as Nate's laptop versus my Zeta Cloud instance. This audio is residing on that instance, but my Nate's laptop hasn't downloaded this audio to listen to this audio. I'll click the download icon, I can listen to it make my marks, all of that good stuff. I might as well click it for you too. So there's the marks there. You can see a little filter or filter the progress bar. Again, additional uh, metadata here, some station specific metadata as well, if you wanted to do that. Um, there's some cool things you can do in regards to, uh, um, uh, what is it? Not playlist, fill, tags. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it. Uh, there's a a, um, a great tool here. Uh, let me double click on that again. Where is that? I wanna make sure I tell you. Um, bu -bu -bum. where is it, Marks? Oh, it's gonna bother me now. I'll, I'll find it for you. There's a really cool thing you can do in regards to um, some filler playlists that you can have inside of here as well. Um, wow, I'm running a uh, a blank. Is it tags? Splits? Ah, I mean, it's tags. Oh, it's gonna bother me now. I'm sorry. I had this all queued up, ready to go, and I'm I'm running a blank here for a second. Anyway, it's essentially an option where you can define a playlist on the fly. The idea is that you can say that this song, this song, this song, this song is included in a playlist. Once we have that playlist, we can go and schedule it. So for whatever reason, if you're, let's say, you don't have a schedule for some odd reason or something's going on, you can say, hey, play this playlist or play um, a station based on all these things. It's a really cool way that some of our stations, our clients, for example, if I want to do like a Billie Eilish, uh, she's got a new album coming out. I can say, take all the songs or Billie Eilish, put a tag on there for Billie, and I can say, hey, play Billy in a rotated you know, hour type of thing. It's pretty cool. Um, that's in there as well. Um, but again, you can see here, all of our asset types are here. Spots, links, voice tracks. They're all in there and saved as well. If I go to my uh, hotkeys here, I have my hotkey window. I can always take one of these elements here, left click, drag it over if I wanted to. Um, so I'll just take the size and hours, right click, drag it over, boom, save my hotkey, right click on that hotkey. I can, of course, audition audio. There's a full audition down here in the very bottom. I can also set the color if I wanted to here. We'll make this nice. What do you guys want? Blue? 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 Done. Saved. There's your blue. Um, and again, you can see the little cloud there is because locally cached audio. That's what that's doing there, too. So there's my hotkeys and my library. Uh, let's see here. System monitor. I, I want to show you the tabs here, just in case you're wondering. Um, again, this is my system monitor, a snapshot of my stations plays a more active role than Zeta to go because we want to actually take these sequencers online and offline. The reality is, is the difference between, let's say, your local system in Zeta versus a cloud-based system like Zeta Cloud-based Disaster Recovery is that we're talking about bandwidth and streaming, and that's where the money resides in, right? So if we have a 24-7 stream, you're paying for that bandwidth. And some users are fine paying for it. Some don't necessarily need it because it's a backup for disaster recovery. They're really there focusing on the audio backup, the schedule backup, and the SQL backups. So depending on what your environment is, you can have some flexibility there. But the idea is that you know you have a sequencer. If it's playing, that's what you're paying for, right? Is that bandwidth that you're 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 having. So we essentially keep these in idle mode 
essentially. And then when you have to enable your disaster recovery, you essentially bring it online and we're good to go. Simple stuff. Our encoders are green. We're healthy. Sequencer, healthy. Everybody's happy. We're green. Life is good. That's what we're doing here. There's also a storage here. You can see how much storage you have as well if you wanted to. Um, let's see here. I want to go. What other module I have here? Let's say voice tracks, mono, hotkeys, playlists. I did the playlist already. That's fine. Um, I just want to kind of show any kind of configuration options here. Maybe you want to do something like this. Put them side by side, something like this. I'm just trying to play around. Um, questions. Let questions, uh, feel free to throw them my way. I know there's a little bit of delay on here. So if you have any questions, let's do last call for questions right now. Just kind of want to show you playing around in the software. But if you have any questions for me, now it's time to ask them. Be there Zeta Cloud, uh, Disaster Recovery, any of that stuff, let me know. Um, but again, you can see here, so I'll jump back to the on-air module on this one. It, it's, you have all these options you have open here. You can take these little hotkeys here, drag that open something like this. Uh, take that hotkey, put this back to a playlist. And you can see that you can start to have some really cool flexibility with these tiles. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to move this over here, something like this. Um, and of course, I can always go to layout, save this layout if I wanted to. So let's quickly review what we talked about here. 2023 disaster recovery solutions for you. Uh, number one, if you have G Selector, don't forget your data exchanges. If you have your Zeta, double check your backup paths and that the backups are working correctly for whatever reason. Um, in addition, if you have Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery, the idea here is that we take your audio, your schedules, and uh, your SQL backups, save them to a true AWS instance. This is not a VM. It's a container following best practices and securities for AWS. Um, and then, of course, this is software written for and on AWS. Two-factor authentication to log in, thus you'll need a VPN. And then once you have your disaster recovery enabled with the sequencer, you are running as is. There's an encoder built into Zeta Cloud that's going to play out wherever you want to play out pre-configured, of course. Um, and then we can operate here normally. We can control the on-air product. We can change the modes. There's unique ways to go and do live stream for your morning show. We can play, pause, stop. The enterprise solution is there. We can switch between stations. We have a full playlist. We can adjust. Left click, drag and drop, delete, add, skip, that whole thing there. We have our library. We can continue to add audio into Zeta Cloud if we wanted to. Um, in addition, if we ever add a song into Zeta, it's automatically available in our Zeta Cloud instance as well. We have hotkeys. We can voice track. Speaking of voice tracks, we can take that voice track in Zeta Cloud, look at our Zeta instance. Oh, what is this? Uh, God, there you, oh, don't you love that? Um, and so there's my voice track right there that I recorded with you just earlier, landing correctly. It's available in my library, available in my log. If you don't want to give a VPN to one of your talents, have them voice track on Zeta Cloud. Again, two-factor authentication. That's there for you as well. Um, and just really quick rest restoration. The idea that I can go, and once the computers are up and running, that's going to be on you. But from the Zeta perspective, once your computers are up and running, just restore the SQL database. And then boom, everything's there, ready to go. All of your station profiles, all of your services, all of your outline of your entire Zeta network is already there for you as well, which is really cool. Um, let's see here. Save your layouts, individual modules, configuration here. Again, we took the encoder that's built in there too. Um, control the on-air, control the playlist, control the library, control the hotkeys, control the sequencer, voice tracking. You can see this is a pretty robust very, very cool solution in regards to a cloud-based disaster recovery solution, right? Really cool stuff here. And now you're looking at this, you're like, Nate, I can do a lot of work here. I can do it on the cloud. Why would I want to have, you know, this full Zeta, for example? And we get it. We get it. It's coming down the pipeline. We're working on it right now as we speak. The difference there is going to be Zeta cloud disaster recovery. That's going to be phase one. Phase two, Zeta Cloud Automation. And if you know the joke, phase three is profit. That's the idea there too. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, thank you, Henrik. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate it. Is my chat still working? I appreciate it there. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you uh, next Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time for another RCS Live. Don't forget the archive. There's some great videos here. If you're currently an active Zeta Cloud client, uh, I did purposely film a video of how to remember how to enable your sequencers. That's in our blog section there. 
helpful tool. Save it for you and your team members. Because if you ever want to have, let's say, it, you don't want to have disaster, but if a disaster does strike, you don't want to go and then think, oh, what do I have to do again? Let me save you the work there. I saved that video there intentionally for you so that if you ever have disaster, you want to enable your Zeta Cloud, be it a real disaster or just for just some site maintenance or just testing, reference that video, the URL that is there and locked. So you can see exactly what's going on. And of course, you can access this at rcsworks.com or on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash rcsworks. So again, thank you so much for the time. I'll see you next week. Have a fantastic rest of your week.